I'm good. All right, guys, what's up? My name's Daniel. Um, so, hey, Reese. So, um, whenever you're doing tree work, you guys know I have a tree business. Tree work's kind of like my thing. When you're doing tree work, you have to, like, work above the ground sometimes. Like, there are terrestrial tree workers, but <coughs> you don't really get very far in the business doing that. So there's two ways to access a tree that's above the ground. One is with the bucket truck, which is, like, five, six digits. The other one is with tree climbing equipment, okay? So, let's say, uh, Levi, come here, I need to demonstrate. I need a, a prop. A little prop. All right, hold your arm up in the air like this. All right, so Levi, we're going to say Levi is like a uh, oak tree, and I'm a, I'm a climber, tree climber. Okay, so, oops, I'm right like that. I'm right like that. All right, perfect. So, like, if this was hooked to my climbing saddle, which your climbing saddle is uh, it's what tree climbers use, it's actually not a fall arrest saddle. If you don't know what you're doing, you can fall out of a climbing saddle, but it's intended for working in trees. It's kind of like rock climbing hummus, but it's a whole lot more comfortable. So if this was hooked to me right here, and this rope right here was slung over a branch that was 20, 30, 60 feet in the air. If I pulled on this side, what would happen? Going up. I'd be going up. Right. Okay. Now the problem with that is when I get 30 feet in the air, what's holding me there? Yeah. Me. So if I let go, i got a big problem with my hands. All right? So what we're going to do today, we're going to tie a knot right here that fixes that. Okay? Thank you, Levi. I'll get you back up in a minute, though. Okay. Beautiful demonstration. Give me a round of applause. <laughs> okay. So, in tree work, I got like a bunch of different ropes up here. First, I want to give like an outline of ropes, too. Um, on, in front of you, you have a piece of paracord. Paracord is like a small rope. Um, it has a 50-pound working limit. and has a 550-pound breaking point. So, a breaking point is always 10 times what a working limit is. So, you can hang laundry on that. Most people don't hang 500 pounds of laundry on there line, right? So, um, and that has inner strands. So the, the strength of that rope in front of you comes from the inner strands and the core, as well as the outer jacket, okay? Here's two other ropes you commonly see. Um, actually, we'll start with this one first. So this is a rope you'd see like at the hardware store, and this is called uh, three strand, because it has three strands, right? Um, and it's the twisted with a machine in this. Now, in a, tree climb, or in, a, in a tree work scenario, this rope right here would be used for rigging, okay? And rigging is like taking a tree and dismantling it in smaller pieces. So you've got a tree over top of your garage, like, like an oak tree, like a really big tree, like thousands of pounds of wood. The only two, way to get, the only two ways to get it off of your garage are to use a crane or to rig it. Cranes are expensive. So rigging enables us to take branches that weigh hundreds of pounds and lower them down to the ground. And the way you would do that is you would take this rope or another style of rope and a climber would affix it to the piece that you want to take down and then the rope would be run to a higher point in the tree and then a groundsman would have the other end of the rope. And whenever the climber cuts the piece, the groundsman will lower the piece to the ground. And there's actually like technology out there that allows a groundsman to lower a piece that weighs a couple thousand pounds with super, super heavy duty rope because they can create more or less friction in the system. So imagine this rope right here, if I was lowering a piece and I had this rope up top wrapped around a branch and wrapped it around like three times, what's that going to do as opposed to if I just wrapped it around a branch once? It's stronger if you have more times you wrap it, right? Yeah. And it's also going to encounter more friction. So the, it, in a tree work scenario too, the difference in these two ropes this um, three strand is very abrasive resistant, so you could wrap it over a log and use it to lower another piece. Probably wouldn't lower a piece anymore than like 50 pounds of it though. Okay? This is a double braid rigging rope. This rope's like $200 for a 100 foot spool. It has a 26,000 pound breaking point, so you can hang your truck from it or your car. Um, it's used to rig much larger pieces, but this piece is not abrasive resistant at all. So if you were to rub it over top of a branch, it would wear out easily. So they make like pulleys and things that make that more efficient. But there's tons and tons of different kinds of ropes used in the in the tree industry. They're not very they're not that similar to like um, ropes you would see on a dock or on a boat or something like that. Like basically, tree ropes are only used in the tree business. All right, so. Get, get what we were doing here. I said we were going to tie knots, right? Okay, so I set up this dilemma here in the beginning um, with Mr. Snap demonstrating that if I hold myself up here, if I pull myself up to the top of the tree, I don't have any way to hold me. 
So a way that we've created to alleviate that is called Blake's hitch. A Blake's hitch is a friction hitch. A hitch is a type of knot. Okay? And um, go over some rope terminology. This is called a bite. An overhand knot is this, like the kind you put in your shoes before you tie. Um, before you use any rope for rigging or climbing, you always inspect it. Your life's going to be dependent upon it. It's a good idea to take a look at. And so when you inspect a rope, you go over for like um, nicks, burns, what kind of thing would you have a problem with if you were using a friction hitch and it was sliding all over the rope? I don't know. <laughs> friction hitch. Friction hitch. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, well, it'll make sense in a second. That was a poorly worded question, might be. Okay, so, so to start off with, let's say this is my climbing system. Okay, so I am like hooked in. This is over top of a branch, right? All right, I'm going to put my back to you. Don't think it's being disrespectful. It's just so what you're looking at is the same as the rope you have in front of you. Okay, first I'm going to demonstrate and then we're going to do it. Okay, so the first time is just to watch. You can't see, holler at me. So this rope is hung over a branch right here, and this is hooked into my climbing harness. So we'll just go ahead and tie a little knot in this right where it's hooked in the climbing harness. This is just a visual, okay? So like I said, this is over top of the branch, this is in the harness. We need to tie a knot in this to hold it. It's called the Blake's hitch, okay? The way we're going to tie the Blake's hitch, okay, and there's also a diagram right there. We're going to take the tail end, as far as like knot, or as far as rope terminology too when you're tying a knot, this is called the working end, this is called the running end, because this is the end that slides to the knot as you go up the tree. It's running. Get it? Running end? Okay. Y'all can laugh now, lighten up some. <laughs> okay, so in our picture over here we see the first step is to go around the front side of the rope. Okay, following that, I don't have enough hands to hold this up here. Leave out here, the one. Hold this over top of that. Yeah, beautiful oak tree for me. Okay, so as we can see in our diagram, we take this, wrap it around in front, and then on step two, we have four wraps. So there's two, three, and then four. Okay, following that, we come back around the back side, we go out in front of this piece of working end, behind this, this one gets complicated, I'll talk you through it in a second behind our running end, and then we tuck this back up through those two little loops on step three. There's two loops in the back, okay? Now this looks like a mess right now. Important part of knot tying is tying, tying obviously that's the important part of it, but you have to dress it and set it. It's called TDS, tying, dressing, and setting. So right now this doesn't really look like what's in step four. So the way you dress it and set it, you make it look like it does in step. So in that case I'm going to tighten these up, I'm going to pull this down, Okay, and then by setting it, I'm going to pull it like this and tension it. So if I was hooked in right here, that's where my body weight would be. And then this would be under pressure and this would be under pressure because it's hanging on the branch, right? So the reason why this is called a friction hitch, because when I pull on this, it grabs really good. When I'm not pulling on it, it slides. So it catches your progress. So if you're going up the tree, you pull this as you go up and it catches your progress. Pretty slick, right? My life counts on that knot, like two days a week. Okay, so now, thank you very much, Levi, your boss. All right, so let's tie this knot. So first step, this will probably be easier if we lay the rope or the paracord on the table. Okay, and so, oh yeah, fun fact. This is a piece of, this piece of tree climbing rope. Like I said, it has about a 7,000 pound breaking point. This is called safety blue. If you look at it in the very center of it, it has a blue core. That's in case you nick it with your chainsaw, you know, to like get rid of it ASAP, like really soon. Okay, so, so let's just pretend there's a table right here and we're laying this on the table. This is the part that's going to be over top of the branch. And this is our running in, and this is our working in. We're going to take our working in, set it like this, and then lay it over top of our running in. Okay. Following that, we have to do our four wraps, which I can't hold this up here and do the four wraps, but you wrap it around the running end four times. It helps if you stack it. If it looks like you kind of have to like 
hold it in one place while you're doing it. Okay? What questions are there? You doing good? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so we got our four wraps, and it comes, the last wrap comes back around and comes through this basically like hole where it'd be hanging on the branch. Okay? And then we're going to bring our tail end down over top of this and then around behind our running in. And then lastly, this is like this is the step that's like kind of complicated. You have to take the tail of this and stick it up through these last two loops. So when I stick that bad boy up through there, so it makes it a Blake's hitch. Okay? Right like that. And then once you, if you want to tighten it up some, like take the coils and tighten them up a little bit so that they look more like the picture. It doesn't, it, it seems kind of crazy, but whenever you're tying knots, if it looks like the picture, that makes it a lot more, it makes it work a lot more effectively. Which two ends do you pull to really tighten it down? So to tighten it down, you're going to pull on the end that would be over top of the branch, and then the end that would be hooked to your harness. So pretend that's where I'm tied that one. But then, so there's the slide. Oh. Holy crap, I did. <laughs> Alright, is there any questions? <laughs> Do you tie this before you climb in the tree? Absolutely. If you're good, you climb it after you get in the tree. But that's risky. Now, fun fact of the day, and I'm almost done. When you're climbing trees, what I would actually do instead of this, I would hook this rope into my, I would actually untie this, hook this rope into my climbing harness, like this, right over top of a branch, and then I take this guy right here, and I hook it in to my climbing, my, my saddle, and I tie the knot with this. Why do I tie the knot with this instead of the end of this rope? Uh, so if you saw that one, you're not like dead. That's one reason. <laughs> what was the question? What's, why would I use this little extra little piece here instead of just taking the end of this rope and tying it back on to hold myself? You can move around. You can move around. If you want to, if you want to move to a higher branch, you just unflick this bad boy. If you want to move to a higher branch when this is tied on, you got to retie that knot. And then you fall back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there any questions? Did we all learn how to tie a knot today? All right. Sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, Reese. Like when you're going up higher, higher.